The first change already, small change, but critical one for our biology and physiology is you need to eat something before you move or exercise in the morning. Yeah. And to also, I think like the bigger thing here for me is that I'm starting to realize I have been so brainwashed about the fact that you need to be thin. Yes. That it's a paradigm shift to actually think, well, wait a minute, I need to learn how to work with my body and my natural wiring to make it work for me right. and to actually optimize the way that my body's designed as a woman. Right. And one of the things that um, has come up recently in conversations where uh, some women who've just started into the strength training realm or have dropped all of their you know big cardio walking, because we all come from the 80s and 90s of let's do 90 minutes of aerobics and, and that's not appropriate. So they've gotten out of that mentality, but they'll see other women at the gym who are on the elliptical or treadmill mm -hmm. or out running mm -hmm. and they look really lean. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, I don't understand. I kind of want to look like that, but I know that I need to be doing strength training. So I'm confused. The women that are 40 plus who are doing the cardio, for the most part, they're going to be what we call skinny fat. So that means that they're not going to have a lot of quality muscle. There's going to be a lot of, of fatty tissue within the muscle and their bones are going to be like chalk. Because if we are doing all that cardio work and we're not looking at how our bodies are aging and what we need, we need the food before the training, we need to put in some strength training, then we're going to continuously be breaking down the tissue that we want to keep to age well. So when we're talking about that mentality of, well, what do I do? It's like these small steps of, yeah, let's have some food before. Let's look at how we are dosing our exercise. What kinds of intensities? Let's bring in some strength training because all of those are going to feed forward to having our lean mass, having really strong bones, having really good neural plasticity. So that means how your brain changes in a positive way. So as we age, we don't get dementia. So these are all the things that I would rather women focus on than the drive from the 90s to be Kate Moss thin. Mm -hmm. Because on the outside, that drive to be super thin is killing us on the inside. Wow. You, you mentioned protein coffee. Can you explain what that is and how that might satisfy the first takeaway, which is eat before you move in the morning? Yeah. So a lot of women don't have an appetite first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those, but I know that I need fuel. So I'm very much an espresso addict. I love it. And one of the simple things that I do is I make a double espresso at night and I mix some protein powder into my almond milk or whatever milk you want. And then I put the hot coffee in there and I put it in the fridge overnight. And then it's my go-to first thing in the morning where then I'm getting my 30 grams of protein. I'm getting my caffeine. It tastes like a latte. I'm good to go. And so that's a first hit. It's a first eating opportunity to bring in some of that protein that we need. And if you're going to go do any kind of exercise, knowing that exercise mutes your appetite, then it also helps with that recovery part because you're going to have those amino acids circulating. Your brain's going to say, hey, yeah, okay, I've got stuff to rebuild tissue. So it's a really good way of being able to have what you need without feeling over full and still enjoying some of the good things of life, like coffee. Well, you've changed my life already. Yay. Because I've got two takeaways. The first one is, and I still want to stay on it so I actually understand why eating first thing before I move my body and having fuel first thing in the morning is actually super important. And I want to unpack that a little bit more, but I want to hover on the protein coffee because I'm drinking it right now. Mm. You made me one in our studios here in Boston. This is going to change my life. And here's why. I have struggled forever since I've learned, and a lot of us are learning as women, that focusing on more protein and especially getting protein first thing in the morning is super important. And I'm always struggling with how the hell am I going to get 30 grams of protein first thing in the morning without choking down 10 egg whites? Yeah. And what do I do if I'm on the go? And what do I do if I'm tired of eggs? And what do I do if I don't have a blender near me and my stuff? What do I like? And so you literally took a scoop of protein, shoved it in milk, put in espresso, stirred it up and put on ice. It tastes like a freaking milkshake. And what I love about this is that 
A, I can make it the night before. B, it's 30 grams of protein in a cup, which C means I could even take this on the walk with me. I could take this in the car if I'm dropping my kids off somewhere. I could make this on the road. Yeah. Like this is such an incredible tip. So thank you for that. You're welcome. And what I want to do though, Dr. Sims, is you mentioned that when women wake up, our brains are different than the guys and our stress levels are higher. And it is important to understand that and to give yourself a little bit of fuel. Mm -hmm. What happens in your body if you do start eating breakfast in the morning or use, because a lot of women skip it. A lot of women are now intermittent fasting. A lot of people are waiting until noon. A lot of people don't want to eat before they exercise because they don't want cramps or they like actually want to maximize calorie burn. But what is the benefit to a woman in particular first thing in the morning if you give yourself fuel? There's a few things to unpack there. Okay. So first, we look at eating opportunities because there's so many women who are, one, trying to lose weight or two, already in the fitness space and following some of the trends that don't eat enough. Mm -hmm. So if you aren't eating enough, you're not going to actually change your body composition. So we look at eating opportunities. First thing in the morning, 30 grams of protein, boom, that's an eating opportunity that you're not really feeling overly full, but it's such a great benefit to the body and you're ahead of the game by having 30 grams of protein. We also look at some of the newer research that's coming out about our circadian rhythms or how our body goes through 24 hour cycle. And for people who break their fast by around 8 a.m. and then they don't eat after 6 p.m. have all of these great metabolic outcomes that you would expect from quote intermittent fasting. Hmm. But we see that people who hold a fast till noon or after don't get any of that benefit. So if we look, well, why? Why is that? We have to understand that a half an hour after a woman wakes up, we have a spike in cortisol. That's our stress hormone. If we don't have food to tell the brain to drop that, then we stay in this heightened stress state. And what cortisol is responsible for is that fight or flight, but also providing fuel for being able to fight or flight. So the first thing that goes is we start chewing into our lean mass, which is bone and muscle, mm -hmm. and a signal to keep our body fat, especially as we start to get older. Wait a minute. So not eating and not eating because you think it's going to help you lose weight actually counterproductive. It's counterproductive yeah. because it's signaling your body to stay in fight or flight, which makes your body hold on to fat. Yes. Are you kidding me? No. I mean, when we look at the trends of the fasted training, don't eat before, it's all on male data. And the difference between men and women in this situation is, again, it comes down to the brain. So a man can get by with the fasted training because when we're looking at getting up and holding a fast or going training without food, for a man's body, it stimulates the little molecular structures in the muscles to use more fat because their muscle structure and the types of fibers that they have are different than women's. So men have what we call more glycolytic or fibers that use glucose and not as many oxidative or the fibers that use fat as a fuel. Women, we're born with more of those oxidative fat burning fibers. So when we go and we don't provide fuel, the body's like, I'm going to store fat because I'm going to need it because that's the preferred fuel for your muscles. So men's bodies will start to adapt to be able to use more fat, which is why you see fasting and holding a fast working so well in men. But for women, it doesn't do the same because we have different feedback mechanisms from the brain. We have different muscle requirements because of different morphology, we call it, or different muscle fiber types. So this is where, you know, we start looking at all the stuff that we've been trained to do over the decades and how counterproductive and harmful it can be for women who are trying to improve body composition and bone. Wow. Now, does eating first thing in the morning, because you mentioned the circadian rhythm, mm -hmm. for a woman also help you sleep better at night? Absolutely. How come? Because if we're looking at decreasing our overall stress response, so that cortisol, bringing the cortisol down, over the course of time, you're going to have a lower baseline 
of that cortisol. If you have a lower baseline of cortisol, then your body can get into what we call parasympathetic. So that's what you need to sleep. If you have this high elevation of cortisol all the time, we're always sympathetically wired. So we can't get into deep reparative sleep. So you see a lot of awakenings. The other thing that happens when women front load their food, so we have a lot of of our calories in the day, which Mm -hmm. we should, Mm -hmm. then when we go to sleep, we aren't waking up with hypoglycemia. So that means we're not waking up with low blood sugar. Because a lot of women who under eat or hold a fast and they aren't eating enough, their awakenings at night is due to low blood sugar. I thought it was because I had to pee. Well, it's also because of the low blood sugar? Mm-hmm. Doctor said, where the hell have you been? Like, I, I needed you in my life like decades ago. I needed me then too. <laughs> I, it's taken me this long to be able to acquire all the knowledge and the research. So now I'm hoping that we can hit all of the listeners and so that they will learn what we should have known this decades ago. This is so eye-opening. Like already you have highlighted so many differences between men and women just in the morning just in the stress levels, just in the fuel that we need in the morning, in the muscle composition, like all of it. And it also is very illuminating because it makes a lot of sense then as to why the programs that work for Chris and seem to work like magic actually leave me frustrated and tired. Yeah. 